Well, joining me to discuss this is Mike Pack, talk TV contributor Esther Cracker, associate editor of Daily Mirror, Kevin Maguire, political journalist Ava Santina, and we're joined from across the pond by the podcast host I mentioned earlier, Zuby. Uh, Zuby, let me start with you, because um, I liked your comment about jet lag. Uh, it hasn't worked for me, but I like the inspiration that you gave me to try and make it work, and I'm working on my I don't have jet lag skills. Um, on the wider point, it's a minefield, this whole area of mental health. There's no doubt to me, uh, I've got three sons in their 20s, and I know lots of their friendship groups. There are a lot of young people suffering from genuine anxiety. I wouldn't categorise it as clinical depression. Um, it may be in some cases, but just general levels of anxiety that I don't think, think existed when I was that age. A lot of it may be uh, phone-driven, you know, being subjected to endless terrible imagery, which we never used to have to be exposed to when we were young. I'm not sure what it is, but when you look at this whole situation, what do you think? Yeah, Piers, I think it's one of those situations where multiple things are true at once and people often go to extremes when it's not necessary. It can absolutely be true that there are people who suffer genuine serious traumas which require things like therapy and that there are people who have real mental illnesses or severe mental health issues where medication temporarily or even on a perhaps longer term may help. And that can be true. It can also be true that many things are being overdiagnosed and that the human condition itself has been pathologized in various ways and that there are all sorts of influences out there which are not necessarily serving people's best interests because they do make money, billions of dollars and pounds off of certain medications. You said the therapy business itself is worth, I think you said, $150 billion mm. Um, mm. per year. And so there are very misaligned incentives here. But I do think that one thing that happens with a lot of these conversations is people are very willing to talk about the symptoms. But as a society, we don't often go deep on what some of the causes are. We'll talk about mental health. We'll talk about depression and anxiety. But there won't be a lot of talk about the family situation and the households that people are growing up in, their friend uh, social networks, not, not online social networks, but their real social network. Are they part of a church? Are they part of strong communities? What are their beliefs? What are their, what's their physical health status? Mm. Physical and spiritual health are connected to mental health. So similar with many other issues, we talk about everything at the symptom level and try to find a pill or a potion or a therapy that is going to work for everybody. But I think in many cases, we're not really getting to what the root of the issue is. You touched on one other thing, which is the rise of use of smartphones and social mm. media. That's absolutely having an impact on people's mental well-being, being bombarded by all these images and opinions and just pure amount of information every day. This is something very new that our ancestors didn't have to deal with. So I'm not surprised that there are more, young, right. more and more young people every year who are reporting that they're having anxiety, depression, or whatever else it may be. 